Her eyes watered and burned, and she tried to absorb everything that had happened in the last few hours. My head hurts, she managed. Candy dug in her purse and handed a small tablet to Terry. Take this, it'll help. Terry looked at it and thought it looked like a time at all. She took a sip of her water and swallowed and said, I've never been a waitress. Candy giggled and raised her hands to Terry's cheeks and said, It's not rocket science, and we have to get you out of that apartment. It sucks. You haven't seen it. I know the type. You'll stay with me until you can sort it out. Are you on a lease or month to month? She picked her cell phone out of her purse. Terry sat there a little wide-eyed herself, sipped at her latte and wondered, Who is this chick? Maybe random acts of kindness are their own reward, she thought, as she settled on into Candy's car. <clears throat> the trunk slammed shut and Candy maneuvered her round bottom into the driver's seat. She turned the car on, pushed the air conditioner up full glass, and pulled down the vanity mirror. She used her fingernail to trace the line of her full lips, smiled, showed her teeth, pushed her lustrous blonde hair back across her slender shoulders, and pulled away onto the strip with barely a glance at oncoming traffic. There was a long blast from a horn behind them and the sound of someone cursing. Candy giggled, pulling further into the street and smiled. Buckle up, honey, I'm not a very good driver. Candy dug into the center console and opened a bag of pistachios. Want some? She sucked the red nut into her mouth, pursing her lips and positioning the opening groove along her front teeth as she opened it. Hands free and smiled. Terry admired her dexterity and reached for one and asked, Where are we going? Candy just smiled and gunned the car a little harder, weaving in and out of lanes. Shopping, babe. <clears throat> I can't go shopping, Terry muttered. I can't spend the money. The first outfit is on me, sweetie. I can't let you do that. Sure you can, and then we will roll by the club, your shitty apartment, and home, doll. She spoke in a rapid-fire staccato rhythm that didn't always make sense, but it did sound commanding. I didn't move here to work in a bar. I want to work in the music business. She said, you'll meet more people in the music business and then I get the hippo than you would have a month at the office. This is L.A., Dal. The business is all done off hours. Terry furrowed her brow and ran her fingers across her temple, and she felt a warm buzz flush throughout her body. Mm. I don't think that was a Tylenol. It all made no sense, but somehow it all seemed reasonable. Candy hit the brakes hard, coming to a stop in the middle of the street. Listen, hon, it's very simple. Are you ready to drive back across the country, or do you want to do what you came out here to do? Things don't always go exactly as we planned them. You have to be willing to, you know, adapt. Her lips moved slowly as she continued chewing the pistachio. Honey, it's up to you. Terry felt another warm rush of relaxation shoot through her body, and she listened as car horns blared all around them. She smiled, pushed her own hair back behind her ears, and said, Fuck it, let's go shopping. Her head hurt the next morning, her eyes burned, and her tongue felt like a funky spaghetti mop. The pillow was soft, and the room was flush with the light of the new morning sun. The apartment was quiet. She was sure that she was alone, but she could feel a pair of dark eyes bearing down at her in the unmistakable scent of dog breath, and then a whippet-like tongue licking at her cheek. She sat up, startling herself and the dog, who began to bark with a piercing yelp. The dog recovered and made its way back to her side to be petted. Terry heard Candy's voice call out, Be quiet, Louie. Five more minutes. It's all right, she called out, Candy. I'm up. She said and decided to add nausea to the number of things that she was feeling. She laid carefully back down, resting her head on the soft, comfortable pillow. She made a mental note that she had to call her parents and fell back into a restless sleep. Reliving the past week over in her head, she dreamt about friends. She dreamt about music and her parents and the choices that we make. Candy was sitting on the patio overlooking the strip, smoking a cigarette and sipping a Starbucks latte. She had on a pink baseball cap and a juicy couture sweatsuit. They were pink also and matched her open-toed sandals. Her eyes were open slightly. Her foot rose and fell to the beat that only she could hear. There was a slight breeze blowing down from the canyon and she could smell the sweet scent of the eucalyptus trees as much as she could see them sway. She was dreaming too, lazy thoughts she called them. She was on a beach, sun drenched and rum soaked. The water glistened and her eyes sparkled. She smiled. Elton John's honky cat was playing on the stereo, and Terry heard the words and thought, hmm, the change is going to do me good. I hope so, and she smiled too. Terry padded through the apartment. She saw Candy out on the back of the balcony and thought, does she dress up in her sleep? Candy heard her coming and called out, there's coffee on the counter, sweetie. 
The large glass doors flew open and she stepped onto the balcony, momentarily overcome by the bright sun. Oh, wow, she said as she rubbed her temple while sipping from the venti cup. Good morning, honey, Candy grinned. How are you? Uh, hung over. And she flopped into the open chair. My head, she tried to laugh. I'm not the man they think I am at home, the hunky cat sang. Elton John? Really? Terry raised an eyebrow. What, you don't like him? No, I love him. I grew up on him. I'm just surprised. Why? Well, she pondered, you're not really in his demo. Oh, I'm not political, Candy declared. Her mouth opened slightly, and Terry cocked her head, sipped at the coffee, and said, No, um, I mean his... I'm kidding, sweetie. I know what demo means. I grew up in L.A. And she giggled. Flipped her hair behind her ear and crossed her legs. I don't know. I listen to all kinds of stuff. John at the DJ, he is always turning me on to cool tunes. He's like an encyclopedia of music. Terry squinted and looked out over the strip. Her mind wandered to all the music she grew up with, and she smiled. Candy stood up and stretched, wiggled her bottom, and touched her toes. Her smile was infectious, and Terry said, You're just full of surprises. Candy shrugged her shoulders and giggled, That's me. They sat there in silence for a while, and Candy studied Terry in her too large t-shirt and baggy shorts and thought, I'm going to have to do something about that. Mona Lisa's and Mad Hatter's queued up, and she saw her sit up a little straighter and cock her ear. Candy giggled to herself and felt like a mad, mad hatter. She saw Terry's crooked grin and said, you could be the Mona Lisa. Nice. Woo! Wow. Yeah. So where do you get your inspiration? Well, I take my wife with my muse, and um, I take pieces of music down and overheard the conversation. And uh, Lisa Burns had this song on her last CD, Pistachios and Corn, and I said, that just sounds right together. Wow. So do you like pistachios? Uh, not so much. Do you like corn? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not talk. <laughs> wow. So, like, what book are you reading right now? Um, I just started uh, Angie Bowie's Backstage Passes. Oh, <laughs> she's been on the show. Yeah. yeah, she's so nice. Yeah. Yeah. The book is, um, I think he's just about to get famous at this point. Oh. <laughs> I knew she was involved in the image making and, right. and all that. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. So, um, what we were asking about um, um, what inspired yeah. where do I get the ideas from? It's like there's two points that I usually think most of what I write um, has something to do with the politics of hanging out and the hierarchy of cool and who are the mystery girls. And I think everything sort of fits into those two ideas. So for those two girls, if you could cast them, who would they be? I don't know. Years ago, Melanie Griffith was my go-to casting. Okay. <laughs> but um, and I've written something a while back down to ah, like my switch. Yeah. Down at the Rock and Roll Club, uh, and um, Taylor Mumpson was perfect for Nikki. But I think I could see her as Candy too. Okay. All right, that works. So, uh, do you have a skeleton in your closet? you'd like to share. It is National Peach Ice Cream Day, and we have a little peach candy for you. <laughs> well, we're ballet slippers because I think they're comfortable. <laughs> that works. There you go. And uh, do you have a website that people can find you? I'm uh, on Facebook and on Twitter. Uh, Tommy Guns on Facebook. Now, there are a lot of Tommy Guns, but do you spell but it a little differently? It's G-U-N-Z-Z. <laughs> Not G U N N. Don't say the wrong way. G U N Z Z. Right. Tommy, that's the only guns we care about, right? Okay. Yeah? Yes. Oh, that's great. So that's why I friended you because I was looking for my old friend Tommy Guns, who I used to work with, and I couldn't find him. So all these Tommy Guns, you know, came up, and you were the coolest. So. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I found out after um, after I got the moniker Tommy Guns that there were quite a few of them out there. Oh, you didn't know that? No. Wow. Well, Actually, my wife's friend had hung it on me, had hung it on me about, um, I don't know, about 10 years ago, and it stuck. Cool. <laughs> well, do you have anything else you'd like to share, say, less? No, I think I'm good. good? <laughs> <laughs> You're in a blog. I don't, I don't do blogs. I don't even know where you find them. So. Well, I'm, 
basically just have posted most of this on Facebook. On a uh, note, like, like a as note, a note yeah. and then I'll tag people in. Yeah. But um, as I got started, and that's how I met some of the other people in the room, was on um, MySpace, and I did blog on there, and um, of course yeah. it was easier to get followers for the blog on that. Cool. So follow Tommy Guns, G-U-N-Z-Z, -Z -Z, on Almighty Facebook. Thank you so much for visiting. We got more.